Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another episode of Total Breakdown. This time we've got a submission from Hippo String, who leads the Empire in battle against the Greenskins led by U Karma. This one's an exciting one, going right down to the wire on Alpine Ridge. So without further ado, let's look at army composition. The Empire is bringing with them the General of the Empire, an Amber Wizard, an Empire Captain, three units of Swordsmen, two units of Halberdiers, two units of Great Swords, three units of Crossbowmen, and two units of Reichsguard. You'll notice that two of the Swordsmen have been ranked up to rank 3, and one has been ranked up to rank 2. Meanwhile, over on the Greenskins, we've got Grimgore Ironhide in charge, alongside a Knight Goblin Shaman, four units of Savage Orcs, three units of Orc Biggins, two units of Black Orcs, two units of Orc Boar Boy Biggins, and a unit of Doom Diver Catapults. You'll notice also that three of these Savage Orcs have been ranked up to rank 4, so imagine there are some pretty heavy expectations on their shoulders. With that said, let's take it to the battlefield. As always, let's start with a little preview of what we're about to see here. So, of course, on Alpine Ridge, we've got this giant ridge in the center that divides the two armies, actually blocking vision for both armies, so neither knows what the other is fielding, which can lead to some pretty interesting situations, unless, of course, you've got vanguard units or units off to the sides just to give you a little bit of sight, uh, you're not going to know what the enemy has. Now, the Greenskins almost immediately begin to push forward and take the top of this hill, whereas the Empire actually plays more of a defensive role here, hoping to bait the Greenskins down and, and have the engagement happen sort of at the foot of the hill here. Also off to the side, we've got the Reichsguard Cavalry as well as the Empire Captain uh, waiting for the Greenskins to make a move, slowly sneaking forward in the cover of these trees and planning a flanking maneuver on either side of the hill. Uh, overall, that seems to be the action plan here, so let's watch as you'll see right away the Greenskins start pushing forward to take the hill. Now, uh, I don't know if it's sort of just knowing the numbers or if it was a wild guess, but Hippo String may have just decided that he had no chance of beating the Greenskins to the top of this hill in a foot race because all of his units do have, I mean, average speeds, but nothing that compares to your standard Greenskin build. So these guys would have made it to the top of the hill first, and uh, the Empire units would have just been tired, would have arrived there later, and would have been pummeled. So good call to stay down here at the foot of the hill. Now, some might say that uh, giving up the height advantage is a bit of a problem because it's so important. However, it is possible to bait your opponent out of that high ground and, uh, and get them to play on your side of the field instead. So if that's the attempt here, there's no problem with that at all. Now, as the Greenskins arrive at the top of this hill, you'll notice actually they don't actually get to the top of the hill. They just sit at the cusp of the hill just behind it. It looks like this was to give the Greenskins vision to see what the Empire is up to and to help open fire with these Doom Diver catapults so that they can start causing some initial damage. Apart from that, hiding behind the cusp of the hill would help counter any artillery fire from the Empire. Uh, of course, cannons don't do too well against the side of a hill. However, crossbows uh, are able to fire over the hill in an arc, as you can see happening here, and still get some early damage in. So nice try by the Greenskins there, by Ukarma, to avoid some initial damage, but, uh, but Hippo String had these crossbows to fire over top, and that's exactly what he's doing. At the same time, he's had his Amber Wizard pull out a Manticore from the ground, and the Manticore will be going around the hill to get some vision, and of course, it's been confirmed that there are uh, Doom Diver catapults on the other side, because some of them have been hitting the Empire lines, so the Manticore is most likely going to take care of that early on to stop that early damage from taking place. Also, you'll have noticed on the side here, the cavalry has been pushed forward and continues to be uh, pushed forward, preparing for what looks like a flanking maneuver on the other side of the hill. So finally, the Manticore goes over the hill, gains full vision of the Greenskin army, and a little late to respond here. I'd say his, uh, his direction of travel would have made it pretty obvious where he's going. It would have been a good idea to at least reform these Orc Biggins and get them ready for, uh, for this Manticore to come in. But you'll notice uh, as soon as it becomes very obvious, these Orc Biggins get pulled back, followed by these Orc Biggins over here, and the Catapults are actually told to, uh, to run off to try and protect them. What should have happened is these Orc Boar Boy Biggins should have been pulled in first. They're a lot faster, they're bigger in ardor, and they're anti-large, so they would have done a number on the on the Manticore, would have pinned it in place, and could have actually destroyed a unit that otherwise is quite damaging uh, and can cause quite a bit of problems 
later on in the battle. So as you'll see, as these Orc Boar Boy Biggins come in, the Manticore is able to get away just in time, but he's done his job. He's caused this interruption in, uh, in artillery fire from the Greenskins. So good play there using the Manticore and pulling him out right in time just to break up the lines a little bit and uh, at the same time prevent that fire from continuing. Meanwhile, over here you'll see uh, Curse of the Bad Moon goes down, and that's a good spell to use, I have to say. However, uh, it needs to be timed a lot better. Right now, this, uh, this spell here is going down the line and causing quite a few debuffs to a few of these units, and while it is effective, it does do a fair bit, you'll see that it's only temporary, and 26 seconds is not enough time for the Greenskins to get to the top of the hill and all the way down and engage in combat and take full advantage of those debuffs. So holding off on that debuff for just a little bit longer, a little bit closer to the engagement would have been a good idea. At the same time on this side you'll see the Reichsguard cavalry have been pulled out to do a flanking maneuver on the other side of the hill and that does uh, rub me the wrong way a little bit. Uh, there's no point in having these guys go in. I assume the target was the uh, the Doom Diver Catapults, but there's a lot of danger on this side of the field from the Greenskins. Also, going in so early actually reveals the card far too early. It's good to have a little bit of patience on the battlefield, but by pulling out so early, uh, the Greenskins are actually able to respond, and if they so choose, they could form up according to this flanking maneuver that's been revealed. So a little bit of a delay there would have been better, and in fact, if the plan is to bait them down, uh, it would have been great just to keep the cavalry in the woods until they were able to be pulled down onto this side. So, again, a little bit of mismanagement there. I feel like that could have gone a little bit better. And uh, back here, the Manticore just ping-ponging back and forth with this Doom Diver catapult, uh, keeping it away from its artillery pieces from to, to prevent it from firing. And the constant crossbow fire with a lack of that artillery support has forced the Greenskins down the hill to engage. So well done there by uh, by Hippo String, forcing the engagement. Like I said, you can get the uh, the enemy to give up their high ground because the Greenskins could have just stood there, but they would have been under constant fire from the crossbows because the Manticore has taken care of the Doom Diver catapult. So the Empire no longer has to worry about ranged fire because it's been dealt with, and the Greenskins are now being forced to engage. Also, as I said, these Reichsguard cavalry are now being pushed up the hill only to try and go back down the hill on the other side to engage in some flanking maneuvers. Uh, big loss of vigor here, just not a good use of, uh, of the cavalry, and also you'll see they get caught out by the Orc Boar Boy Biggins. And these guys are anti-large, like I mentioned earlier, so they will do a number on the Reichsguard cavalry. So as you can see, they've already been surrounded and pinned, causing serious morale and, uh, and HP damage, so that's not a good situation to be in. It would have been great again if they'd just been kept back, been a bit more patient, and let them come in to help with these uh, melee engagements on the front line. With that said though, well uh, well controlled here by uh, by Hippo String. He pulled back his crossbowmen, countercharged his swordsmen up to the front to sort of counter that charge bonus that the Greenskins were getting, and right away the Amber Wizard drops down the uh, Flock of Doom, an upgraded one, uh, just to cause some extra damage right at the beginning against these black orcs I imagine was the ideal target but obviously these savage orcs get caught in the uh, the collateral as well obviously so good cast there good initial engagement and as we go on you'll see Grimgor Ironhide drops down some uh, some buffs as well so very important these buffs and counter buffs and, and debuffs to try and help your engagements go the right way and uh, you'll see also that uh, it looks like there's a lot of chasing going on uh, the Empire needs to be a bit more careful about how it chases units off the field. For example, this Manticore has gone all the way to the edge of the battlefield chasing these Doom Diver catapults. They've routed, they've broken, they've shattered. They could have been pulled back quite a while earlier when they were much closer to the, uh, to the central conflict, so they could actually assist back here. Very important to make sure your units aren't just chasing the enemy away or sitting idle like over here. Uh, this unit of Reichsguard could have been, slash, should have been pulled down to help against these uh, Orc Biggins or even against these Black Orcs down here would have been ideal, actually. Orc Biggins do have bigger in order, so that can be a concern. Uh, so again, these guys do have some other uses, but instead they're, uh, they're just standing on the hilltop there. And of course, this Reichsguard unit is all but destroyed, uh, going up against two units of Orc Boy Biggins. Uh, not a good situation. Also, Greenskin uh, Savage Orcs just sort of sitting there 
uh, relaxing when they could be back here preventing these crossbows from opening fire into the uh, into the melee and also over here now the Reichsguard have finally been pulled into action but again they're targeting the orc biggins instead they could have been targeting these savage orcs or or these black orcs helping a lot more than by going up against these uh, orc biggins because you'll see they take quite a bit of damage and again we've got more uh, more buffs and debuffs going down flock of doom once again just really trying to break these black orcs because they are a high threat unit and these Savage Orcs still just relaxing over here, just not kept busy. But meanwhile, the Manticore is coming back to support in this uh, main engagement here. And that Reichsguard unit has been taken care of. Actually, I think they died. They didn't run off. So that frees up the Orc Boar Boy begins to engage the other Reichsguard and take care of them quickly as well. Meanwhile, finally some disruption with the crossbows with this unit of Orc Boar Boy begins coming in and just destroying the, uh, the thin line of, uh, of crossbowmen here. So Greenskin's trying to sort of pull things back together, doing decently. I mean, the well-played uh, by Hippo String, I'd say, using Flock of Doom, using counter charges, etc., to just help and uh, fend off some of the stronger Greenskin units. And meanwhile, you've got this clump of Greenskins just standing there, not doing anything. They really should have been pushing in to help engage some of these uh, some of these losing battles here. Timing is everything when it comes to to battle. Pushing in a bit too late is basically giving up a giving up an engagement. So bad uh, bad management there. And again, flock of doom goes down. Really well played with the amber wizard, just causing that damage, making sure that uh, these guys are hurt before they can even get too too heavily involved. Meanwhile, the general of the empire is able to use his potions of healing and potion of toughness just to keep himself healthy and and going while this engagement is quickly sort of turning to the greenskin side if you look at uh, at uh, the lay of the land so to speak and again itchy nuisance going down so good use of buffs and debuffs from both sides it's just that poor unit management against these these black orcs just standing back there uh, not doing anything though at least uh, these orc boar boy biggins are being pulled in back to these engagements using them to uh, to good effect to try and cause as much damage as possible and also from Hippo String, good, you know, good attempt at bringing back these rallying units, trying to keep them in the fight, continuously pushing and, and trying to stay engaged. The Manticore is driving away the Night Goblin Shaman. Uh, and meanwhile, the two generals have engaged, as you'll see. Now, important to note, Grimgore Ironhide does not have the option of potions of healing or toughness or, or anything, really. He is in some ways running on less life than the general of the empire is and that's why nowadays you'll see more unnamed lord characters being used on the battlefield because of those extra potions they help keep your general alive for a little bit longer and that really helps with morale so uh, you know good call they're not going with Karl Franz or going with Balthazar or anything like that keeping those potions active but Grimgor Ironhide will get the uh, the negative impact of going in without any potions without any of that supporting kind of uh, those supporting items. So let's speed it up a little bit now. A lot of disarray here, everything's sort of falling apart, and it really looks like um, the Greenskins are able to, you know, kind of push really hard, and they'd really win if they'd keep some of these other units engaged. In a, in a matter of numbers, uh, the Orcs really could have won this quite easily, but, you know, they, they aren't managing their troops well enough. A lot of them are staying behind. These crossbows are free to fire at units that have low morale, which is forcing them into wavering and, and breaking. So, you know, good use of that handful of crossbows, just 25 men with, with crossbows, able to just keep pummeling the enemy, keep their, uh, their morale down. And ultimately, the General of the Empire is about to drop dead here. Uh, he's fought valiantly for Karl Franz, for the Empire, but he is about to die. But at the same time, so is Grimgor Ironhide. And with this constant fire from the crossbows, keeping morale down, with the overall plays, even though the general has died, the general of the Empire has died, hurting morale, it's actually the death of Grimgor Ironhide that destroys the Greenskin army completely, resulting in this Peric victory. So overall, very, very well played in terms of using morale as a weapon there. A couple of issues with uh, how some of the units were managed on both sides, which could have really changed how things went down. For example, if Hippo String had managed these Reichsguard units much better, they could have done a lot more damage in the melee coming in as rear charges. Unfortunately, they were intercepted by the uh, Orc Boar Boy Biggins, which... Um, which allowed them to do quite a bit of work, 90 kills and 52 kills on these Orc Boar Boy Biggins, 
and uh, just completely destroying the Reichsguard cavalry before they were able to get in and do any serious amount of work. Also good use of, you know, ranking up, keeping those swordsmen in there, forcing the battle to keep going, making sure that uh, at all costs his units were able to stick in the fight. Also great use of the, uh, the Amber Wizard, loved seeing those debuffs go down or the, I guess, direct damage spells, causing as much damage with magic as possible and using potions of healing and items to just sort of stay alive and stay in the fight until ultimately uh, whittling down green skin morale killing Grimgor Ironhide and chasing them off the field, frightening them away from the battle. I thought this was a great battle that showcases the importance of morale on the battlefield and how you can use it to win what might otherwise look like a unwinnable situation. Really at the end of there, it, it really could have gone the Greenskins' way had they been better managed a little bit, but it was that constant morale damage, that fire from the crossbows, killing Grimgor Ironhide, just collapsing the Greenskins' will to fight and having them run off the field that made the day for the Empire. And also a good showcase of how it's not always about rushing for the high ground. Sometimes you can bait the enemy off the high ground, tire them out because they had to climb up there anyway, just from using ranged attacks and preventing the enemy from using his or her ranged equipment, forcing them into action. Again, this is a collaborative effort here, so if you notice something or if you have any pointers of your own, make sure to drop it in the comments below. And apart from that, for more Total War content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, do keep those battles coming in. They're great to watch. They're great to showcase like this. I feel like there's a lot we can all learn by watching these battles and breaking them down because each situation is different and each one gives us some new information. Apart from that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.